Hi everyone, Kelly here, and today I want to talk about the things that I am planning on reading in July. And originally I wasn't going to do a July TBR because we're going to be out of town for vacation for the second whole half of the month, um, doing like some family reunions. Some of that will be like completely off-grid, like um, very rustic camping. So I just don't know how much reading I'm going to be doing since we'll be with like family members we don't see very often, and like camping and hiking, all that. Um, but I really want to participate in Jane Austen July. So if nothing else, that'll be like what I focus on the first half of the month and then maybe bring some of these books with me on our camping trip. But yeah, so that's why this is just going to be my Jane Austen July TBR. And I'm really excited because I've always liked Jane Austen books like the, the movie adaptations, but I hadn't really read her books because for the longest time I just didn't think that I liked them because I tried Pride and Prejudice back when I was like in my early 20s and didn't like it. Well, it turns out that I do like it. I read it in May and loved it. And then I read Persuasion last month, really enjoyed it. So I really want to participate this year. And so I've got some possibilities. So some of these, I have a few options for the prompts. I will link the announcement videos down below if you don't know what Jane Austen July is, but basically it's just a whole month of reading things either by Jane Austen or inspired by Jane Austen, stuff like that. So the first prompt is to read one of Jane Austen's six novels. So I plan on reading Sense and Sensibility. This is the annotated version I have, but I'm actually thinking I'm going to listen to it on audiobook, though I might reference some of the annotations in this. I'm really excited um, because I did try to read Sense and Sensibility when I was like 21 and did not finish it at that point. So now that I'm 20 years older, I am looking forward to actually reading the whole thing. And then just, I, I, these aren't exactly like, these are more, I wouldn't call these retellings, but I'm going to read some other little things. That's like the main like novel I'm going to read, but I'm also going to read the Pride and Prejudice manga because I read Pride and Prejudice a couple months ago and I just think it would be fun to read the manga version of it. And so that is kind of another plan, but it doesn't necessarily count as one of the six novels, but I would also wouldn't call this a full retelling. It's just the manga version. So I plan on reading that. And then I also picked up the um, Us Born Complete Jane Austen, which is all the novels retold kind of for a younger audience. And I want to read a couple of these to see if my daughter would be at the age to read these with her. And so that's my plan is to read a couple of these. Maybe the first one is Pride and Prejudice. So maybe I'll skip that since I'm already reading that and read one of these, see if it's at that right age group. And then maybe I can read one with her. And so she can be participating in Jane Austen July as well, but just on a kid level. So I just want to see if that's appropriate for a seven-year-old. Then prompt two is to read something else by Jane Austen besides her novels. And I just picked up a copy of Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sanditon. I know the group is doing like a group read of Lady Susan as part of Jane Austen July, but I have already read Lady Susan. I loved it, so I could read it again, but I thought I might as well try The Watsons or Sanditon since it is in this collection here. Um, and yeah, so I, I haven't picked one exactly, but it'll be one of these three things that I will read, whatever inspires me. And then number three is to read a nonfiction about Jane Austen or her time period, the late Georgian or Regency era. So I was going to read a Jane Austen biography, but I thought, you know, a lot of biographies are very, fairly long, like the ones written for adults. And I just don't know with our vacation and all that stuff if I'm gonna have time to read a big biography or if I'm interested in that right now. So what I did was, and this is something that has inspired me by what we do for homeschool, is that children's books have a lot of biographies about famous figures. So I ended up picking up a bunch of picture book biographies of Jane Austen. So I'm going to, I'll read all these and then I might read some with my kids as well. And the great thing about children's biographies is that they have beautiful pictures in them. So this one is very short. So this one might be a one I read with my kids because it has hardly any writing on the page. This is Library of Luminaries, Jane Austen, a illustrated biography. And I didn't expect it to be so tiny. So this one I might read with my kids. And then this one's called Brave Jane Austen, Reader, Writer, Author, Rebel. And this one has really beautiful picture like full page pictures and quite a lot of text so I think that'll be a good one to kind of learn more about her life and then I have a most clever girl how Jane Austen discovered her voice which is another like picture book that has quite a lot of writing as well these aren't going to be given obviously full 
biographies of her since they are picture book versions but it's going to give me like a basic knowledge of her life and so then I can pick up a biography next year and have a little more context. And then this last one's actually pretty long. Um, it's Jane Austen for kids and it's got like quite a lot of words on the page and a lot of photographs. So this one will probably give me the most information in terms of like biographical information. And this one also has a lot of activities to do with kids. So I might do some of these, like there's like activities you can do, like learn the rules of cricket, or you can host a Regency tea or plant an English kitchen garden. So there's like crafts and different activities. So maybe I'll do some of those with the kids. So it's kind of like they can be participating as well and getting like some basic information about Jane Austen at the same time. So this one will actually probably be the most informative, but I just really like reading picture book biographies about famous figures. And you know, I haven't seen people putting these on their TBR, but I just think it's like a great way to learn a little snippet of information about somebody famous without having to read an entire biography, like if you're not prepared for that. So maybe other people should take <laughs> my lead that there's lots of these picture book ones you get a little information and you can always like say, I don't have time right now to read a 400 page or 500 page biography written for adults, but I can learn a little snippet about her right now. And then prompt four is to read a modern retelling of a Jane Austen book or a piece of historical fiction that takes place in Jane Austen's time. So um, I do have one for each of this part of this prompt. For the one that is a historical fiction that takes place during the Regency, I am picking up Cotillion by Georgette Heyer. And I have heard a lot about this author. She, I don't remember when she was writing. She wasn't writing during the Regency, like she was writing historical fiction. So this was in the 50s and she was writing Regency era historical fiction in the 1950s. And I just, and she has a prolific catalog of books. And so I wasn't sure where to start. And it just happened to be um, a woman whose blog I follow, Hannah from Lynn Hermione. I'll link her blog down below. She just did a blog post where she rated a bunch of Georgette Heyer books that she had read in the last year. And so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna pick the one that you liked the best. And so that's what made me pick up Catalian. So this is set during the Regency era. I think it's gonna have some romance in it based off of the cover. So. That is my historical fiction that takes place during Jane Austen's time. And for the other half of that prompt, which is a modern retelling of a Jane Austen novel, it happened to be that when I read Pride and Prejudice a couple months ago, I went a little overboard and went and found a bunch of Pride and Pre Prejudice retellings and I just haven't read them yet. And so um, I already had them waiting for me for Jane Austen July for this prompt. So all of these are Pride and Prejudice modern retellings. There's one that's like a historical one. So the only one that this is one that's actually like taking place at that time, Unequal Affections, which I believe is a retelling that like alters one of the things that happens in the middle of the novel and kind of like says what would happen if this one thing was different in the novel, how would it go? But this is actually like taking pretending like it's happening at the same time as the Jane Austen novel. The rest of these are all modern retellings. So I have Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors. I have The Bennett Women, Pride, which is a popular one that a lot of people have read, Aisha At Last, and Hearthstone, which is actually a fantasy novel with like dragons and stuff. So this is the only like fantasy type one, but the rest of them are all like modern Pride and Prejudice retellings. So I'm not gonna read all of those, but I already have them. So whatever I'm in the mood for, I can pick up. And number five is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. So that is someone that was publishing around the same time as Austen was or alive at the same time as Jane Austen. And I was looking into some novels written around that same time and just nothing was calling to me. And the ones that did kind of piqued my interest were kind of bigger classics and I just don't think with my vacation that I have time to read another big classic this month um what if I want to like accomplish some of the other prompts and so then I was like well why not a play because plays are generally short enough that I could read them pretty quickly and so I was looking into some plays around that time and I found and also I had to figure out what I could get from my library a lot of the ones I was looking up were not available at my library but I did see my library had this collection called She Stoops to Conquer and Other Comedies this is four different plays written by four different playwrights 
that are around the same time as Austin. So not all of these are exactly contemporary. Some of them are a little bit early, um, but the, there's one at least in this collection of four called Wild Oats by John O'Keefe, which was first performed in 1791. So that would have been in the middle of Jane Austen's lifetime. And so I would count that as a contemporary of Jane Austen. So I will definitely read that play, but I might read some of these other ones. They sound like they would be interesting. There's The Clandestine Marriage by George Coleman and David Garrick. And this was performed a little before Jane Austen's time in 1766, but both of the author's lives overlap, their lifetimes overlap with Jane Austen. And then there's She Stoops to Conquer, which is the title play by Oliver Goldsmith. And that was performed in 1773. So that would have been a little before and the author actually died right after the play was first performed. So that would be a little before Jane Austen's time. And then The Modern Husband by Henry Fielding was performed in 1732. So that's quite a ways and the author died before Jane Austen was born. So that's not quite completely a contemporary of Austen, but definitely at least one of these plays Wild Oats is. So I might read all of them just for fun or I might just read that one play, but something else to consider if you don't wanna read a whole novel. I know there you can read poetry, other things that'll be a little shorter and still things written by contemporaries of Austen, but a play is also an option. Then number six is to watch a direct screen adaptation of one of Jane Austen's books. And I plan on watching the new Persuasion that is coming out on Netflix. It's coming out sometime in the middle of July, which will be tough because it probably is coming out right before I leave for my vacation. But I could watch it when we get back because we won't have like television access or like internet access while we're gone. But I could also watch it. I think we're back like a few days before the end of the month. So I can watch it right at the end of the month. But I'm really excited about that because Persuasion, like the BBC Persuasion is one of my favorite movies, Jane Austen adaptations. So I'm excited to see a newer Persuasion adaptation. And then number seven is to watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. And for this one, I'm probably going to watch Emma Approved because when I first read Pride and Prejudice a couple months ago, I ended up watching the Lizzie, Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which I know have been around for like 10 years now, and I just never watched them. It's like a web show um, that's an adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, and I really enjoyed it. I had a good time, and so they did. They also did, quite a few years ago, a Emma retelling that's a web series, and so I'm going to watch that. I've already actually started it because it's like 70 episodes long, and I want to be able to finish it before I go on vacation, so I've already started that and only a few episodes in. I mean, each episode's pretty short, but still watching 70 episodes is quite a lot. Um, so that is my plan is to watch all of Emma Approved before I leave on my vacation. And so that's it. Those are all the things that I plan on reading in July as part of Jane Austen July. And I'm sure there's gonna be other things that I end up reading that aren't part of the readathon, but I just didn't wanna plan anything at this point because I know I won't have a lot of reading time in the month and I really wanna participate in this readathon for the first time and I'm really excited to read some more Jane Austen stuff either by her or inspired by her and that's it for me I'll see you next time bye